Hello and welcome to Unleash Your Inner Tyrant, the most entertaining leadership presentation you are ever going to see. How can I make that promise? Because every other leadership presentation you've seen focuses exclusively on what you should do. And I'm gonna do that as well. But I'll also spend a lot of time talking about all the things you shouldn't do, which ends up being a lot more fun. Unleash Your Inner Tyrant will provide your audience with all the content of a more traditional presentation and all the entertainment value of a comedy show. I've done it this way because I believe that improving your leadership skills doesn't have to be boring, and because I want people to enjoy the process of becoming better. Some of the garbage that uh, you've listened to at this conference, quite frankly, <laughs> blows my mind, seriously. <laughs> Servant leadership, uh, treating people like equals, listening to other people's opinions, taking responsibility for your actions, this is ridiculous. History does not remember the good leaders, does not remember the benevolent people, it's the dictators. <laughs> the tyrants that we never forget. So I am going to help you unleash your inner tyrant. That is right. Would you like the people you work with to scamper down alternate hallways when they see you coming? Do you want your colleagues to pray every day for your premature death? If you do, then you are in the right place. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the advantages that come from knowing your employees, the benefits that accrue from spending time with these people. Maybe you know that Herb Kelleher, Southwest's longtime CEO, was famous for occasionally throwing bags on the tarmac with the other baggage handlers. And in 1994, his employees spent $60,000 of their own money to take out a full page ad in USA Today to thank him on Boss's Day for, among other things, remembering all of their names. That's embarrassing. <laughs> one takeaway sentence, it's this one. Other people are annoying. That's why we live in separate homes. <laughs> now I know many of you, you're gonna have trouble with this concept. You've listened to conversations about trust, the power of trust, the speed of trust, the trust of trust. And you think it's a good thing. If that's the case, you've probably heard this quote by Theodore Roosevelt. It's in pretty much every management book of the last 50 years. The best executive is one who has sense enough to pick good people to do what he wants done and self-restraint enough to keep from meddling with them while they do it. Now, obviously, Teddy trusted the people who worked for him. And uh, let's look what happened to him, okay? A lot of folks focus on the fact that he is often considered to be one of our country's five greatest presidents. But I don't think that's a big deal. What I do think is a big deal is that he got the crappiest spot on Mount Rushmore. Look at that. I hardly need to tell you that change is evil. Uh, it's the enemy, and we need to fight against it with everything that we have. Change is the thing that can turn something like this, oh, I was right, into something like this. That baby needs to be changed. I can honestly say that I've never worked with an easier speaker setting this thing up. He did his homework, he learned our audience and a little bit of background about them, and he brought the house down. I think if you had to distill this presentation into a single sentence, it would be this one. Where is your loyalty? Is it to yourself or is it to your company? And by company, I do not mean the building you work in or the products and services that you offer. That's your business, and very few of us are loyal to a business. I don't know why you started where you are, but the reason we stay where we do and the reason we stay happy where we do is because of the people who make our business into a living thing. Your colleagues, your superiors, your subordinates, your customers, the families of the people that you interact with on a regular basis. Who are you loyal to? The people I highlight as tyrants, the people who act that way in real life, are loyal to themselves first and the rest of the world a deeply distant second. But if there's any part of you that actually cares about the people you work with and for, then you will work to create an environment where they feel free to speak, to share their thoughts and ideas, to challenge you when they think there might be a better way. Leadership is communication. Everything every leadership speaker ever talks about deals directly with how well or poorly you communicate with others and allow them to communicate with you. Most change management literature I don't like, and here's the reason. They argue that change management is a skill that you don't currently have, that it's something you need to add into your existing working model. That is the dumbest argument I've ever heard, because change is absolutely the natural state. 
None of you are the same person you were a year ago or five or ten. None of you are the same person you will be a year or five or ten from now. Our country is unrecognizable from the one that it was when it was founded. Our forefathers never argued health care like we did. They just gave everybody whiskey. That's all they did. <laughs> You want to know how I know that you guys are perfectly adapted to change? Show of hands, who are the parents in the room? How many of you are parents? All right, well over half of you. Well, I'm not a parent, and uh, every so often I make the mistake of telling you parent people that I would someday like to be a member of your little club. And I don't know if you know this about you, mom and dad, but you are the worst salespeople. <laughs> for becoming a parent that anybody, do you ever listen to what you say? I'd like to be a father someday. Well, hope you don't like money. The decision to become a parent changed you more profoundly than probably any other decision you've ever made. And I know you occasionally lament your childless days or your single days where you could do whatever you wanted to do, didn't have to answer to anybody. I also know that you wouldn't trade it, that what those kids bring you so far outweighs what they've taken that it is not a question or competition. The point I'm trying to get at is that you've incorporated tens of thousands of changes, many, many of them major life-altering changes into who you are today. You've done it continuously, seamlessly, effortlessly, and in most cases not even noticing that the changes have occurred. If there is anything all of you are and have always been an expert at, it is managing change. Moments ago, we had the sheer pleasure and honor of Jeff Havens speaking up actually on, on, in front of a table in front of a group of 206 supervisors and he was absolutely fantastic charged energized and was absolutely entertaining how many of you are married I'm guessing a lot of you show of hands okay maybe you are familiar with the work of John Gottman he's a psychology professor from the University of Washington who in 1995 published a book called why marriages succeed or fail in this book he argues that the ideal ratio of positive to negative communication is approximately five to one which means that a good leader might try to have a constructively critical conversation with a subordinate along these lines a hey, great work on the Parker project you met your deadline you can't came in a budget, your presentation skills have gotten a lot better. Next time, I really need you to communicate with me more regularly as we go forward. I didn't always feel like I knew where we stood on this thing, but overall you did a good job. You can see the 5 to 1 ratio here. You definitely heard the criticism, but it doesn't feel too heavy. Almost feels like an honest attempt to help people improve at their business, and that is not what I want you to do. What I want you to do is the compliment sandwich. <laughs> this is a two to one ratio of positive to negative that might make you think you're being nicer than you are mean, but which is really only going to serve to convince your employees that those bookended compliments, the bread, empty calorie crap that y'all sometimes throw away because you're on a diet, is your cover for the purpose of the conversation, which is the juicy, succulent chicken tender of criticism right in the middle. This can actually be a lot of fun, and I want you to see how much fun this can be. I'd like you to turn to the person you're sitting next to. This will be very painless, I promise. Come on, turn to them, look them in the eyes, and repeat after for me, you look great today. I hate you and wish we'd never met. I like your shoes. Now, which one of those was the most fun? <laughs> <laughs>